Hello community, we have some brand new research and it is about the intelligence of agents. It is a new research by Stanford University in the US and Jinghua University in China, Beijing and Shanghai AI Labs. So let's have a look what they were researching for. The topic was a superior planning and a decision making of agents. How can we improve the performance of agents? And the answer by the team was a multi-scale inside agent. So let's have a look in detail. We start here with a simple idea. We place the added complexity of an agent outside of the large language model. So this means we outsource a learning complexity for more complex tasks outside of the LLM, which has a beautiful benefit. We have no supervised fine-tuning or no reinforcement learning happening on the LLM. We do not have to waste time, money or energy on the LLM, but we go an alternative path. Plus, this new path will generate an explainable and a transparent representation of a new learning paradigm. And no, we don't need any vector spaces anymore for this. So this means whatever we do with RAG, we do not need those anymore. Talking about RAG, you know, a month ago I published this and I think Jerry had a beautiful idea and he said, hey, a trick or a methodology to bypass the RAG complexity is to stop chunking here the documents up for RAG and the alternative that Jerry proposed here, just take the stuff, the entire document into the prompt. Because we have now prompts with 200,000 tokens, 1 million token, 10 million token. And he says, hey, this works more often than you would expect. It's better than RAG-based chunk level retrieval for summarization related tasks. It will decrease the cost and the long context model are helping to make this a lot less painful. And following this idea now, let's have a look what we want. We have a goal that agent should provide relevant and high quality guidance to the LLM. But since we outsource the added complexity, the added intelligence, and it is not inside the LLM anymore, how did we do this here in a typical classical rack? We had our prompt and we had three external documents. And then what happened simply, we identify with a retrieval R in document one. This is the piece of information I'm looking for. Document two, the same and in document N, identical. And then we just retrieve this with the retriever. And the retriever was primarily here for the latest data, for updates on the financial structure of Wall Street or whatever you wanted to have. So with RAG, we could retrieve here brand new information from the external world. And then this added information would simply augment here our prompt information that we would then feed into our LLM. Now we don't want to do this. We want to have a simpler methodology. So we go now for a very specific task. This will be your task. And the LLM generates now inside. This is the approach here by Stanford and Tsinghua University. And they go now, and this is, this is clever, because they say, hey, we have now a generic level, we will have an environment-specific level, and we will have a task and a subtask level. And this is a beautiful idea, and I will explain this in a minute why. Now, you know that then, more or less, we have then now generated insight, a specific insight for a specific task on a generic level, an environmental level, on a subtask level. And then you get the ideas, these insights then will augment our prompt. Now, we still want not to use a direct complexity. We go with Mr. Lang Chain Cherry. But the question is, how do we do this? Now, if you remember here, one of my last video here, and I, thought, I told you here about Michelangelo for the 1 million token reasoning complexity in the new benchmark test. And we went here from the pre-training data memorization from a needle in a haystack to a reasoning capability test. Remember the name Michelangelo? Google explained. Yeah, remember here this block of, of Carrara marble in Italy? And Michelangelo said, yeah, he has just to chisel away the irrelevant information 
to find the statue, the beautiful new statue inside of the Carrara marble block. And this is exactly what this methodology is based off. We have an overload of unimportant information for a specific task and therefore we have to find a way to filter out on each level irrelevant information. So, now the question is only how to generate the insights. How do we do that now that we know what is the core idea of this new research? And, well, you're not going to believe it. We need data. And we need data from previous experiences. And yes, we are looking here primarily at robotic applications. And I will give you an example where we explain this step by step in a minute. So, for each history task, the executor leverages here the LLM to generate here a plan based on the specific task background and the specific user queries. So, either we can look back in the past or, I, in my example, I will show you, I just typed this in here for my little strawberry. And then, subsequently, the robot employs here first order logic to decompose the plan into atomic actions like move forward, pick up something and then execute them in this particular environment. And our environment will be a kitchen because everybody is familiar with a kitchen environment. Now, in some tasks, the executor may replan based on the environment feedback. If the robot finds out, hey, in this environment, I cannot reach the fridge, I have to replan and come up with an alternative solution. But if I complete the task upon completion here, the task background, the user query, the agent plan, the environmental feedback, and the execution result, they are all now stored in the memory of our agent. And this is here the idea. We do not go here to the LLM, but you know that our AI agents have a memory. And we will use this memory now in a little bit more advanced version, so we can store there our information about the history of the experiences of this robot in our kitchen. So, for each experience, what we have? We have a lot of data. We have the task background. So, this is the context and the objective of the task. I will show you a specific task in a minute. Then we have the user query. So, what I instruct the robot to do in my kitchen. Then we have the agent plan. This is not a strategy, this is the sequence of action, the plan that now my little robot thinks he has to do to accomplish the given task. Then we have an environmental feedback, the responses here from the environment during the task execution, and we have a result. Either we have success or failure. So now we have everything, now we know what is the experience. Now this is, if you want here, our starting condition of the system. And now we say, okay, based on multiple domain-specific experiences, now the LLM is tasked to generate here task-specific insights on our three levels of complexity, the generic level, the environmental level, and the subtask level. Now, the researcher had a beautiful idea. Normally, you would say, okay, we just go for the successful mode, no? We take only the example where the robot in the kitchen could successfully complete the task. Well, you know, what is also interesting to see, why sometimes the robot failed to complete the task. So the researcher came up with the pair mode. And this is a nice idea. So we simply pair a successful task with an unsuccessful experience. And then we want to make sure that both tasks are really similar. And I will show you this in a second. But then the LLM should understand, hey, why did it work in one case and in the other case the robot was not able to execute here its given task. So, experience, selection, two modes, the success mode, you understand immediately, and the pair mode, we use the failure to, to learn, that the AI agent learns from its failures. Now, I used here a simulation, I played a little bit around with my strawberry, and I want to give you an example, because I think an example is the, the easiest way to understand here what's happened. So let's have an experience one. And the task I give my robot is make a cup of coffee. So the agent now here in our robot says, makes a plan, a sequence of action to execute here the task. And the 
agent's plan is now go to the kitchen, find a coffee maker, place a coffee filter in the coffee maker, add some coffee to the filter, pour water, turn on the coffee maker, and <laughs> wait until the coffee is brewed, pour the coffee in a cup, serve the coffee to the user, and after it's done, yeah, success, beautiful, so great. So this is what we call an experience. And it is great that this is successful, but you know, what we really learned from if it was unsuccessful, because then we know what mistakes can happen theoretically. Now, I have another query. I said, instead of make a cup of coffee, I said a cup of tea. So you see, I have a very similar task. And now, as it happens, agent makes a plan, but fails because the agent could not find the teapot. And now the idea is that we have a self-learning system and without any inference from humans, the agent is now able to come up with a new solution, given here this new insight here by this new research. And then we have maybe another one, can, I, can you make me a ham sandwich? And you see, this was successful. So if we have those past experiences, this is the basis here for the new agent to learn. Now, the next step is that the agent generates now on our experiences specific task specific insights. And as I told you, the agent does this at three scales, multiple scales, at a general insight level, at an environmental insight level, and at a subtask level. Now, if you look at this, this is nice. An insight that is general, G1, Always locate all necessary utensils and ingredients before starting the preparation of the cup of coffee. And the inside general too, if an item is not found in its expected location in a drawer somewhere, check alternative storage areas like the dishwasher or the pantry. And you see immediately what's happening here if we start to add here general insights. Now we do the same now for a specific environment and our environment is the kitchen. So the inside E environment one is common kitchen items like teapots or coffee makers are usually stored in the cabinets on countertops near the stove. So it gives us hints of the location of the items that we use. And the insight for environment two is the dishwasher or the drying rack may contain clean utensils that are not yet stored away. So alternative places. And you see exactly how we learn step by step. I mean, the AI lear agent learns. Now the subtask, we go now in more details. So subtask, for example, finding here whatever we need. So inside S1, when unable to find a particular item, search nearby areas where it might have been left, such as the sink or the drying rack if our environment is the kitchen. Inside S2, verify if it is currently in use or it needs cleaning or somewhere else in the flat. You get the idea. Another subtask, preparing hot beverages. Both coffee and tea require hot water. Ensure that the kettle or the water source is functioning. Another insight here on a subtask level, gather all ingredients, the coffee grounds, the tea leaves before beginning the preparation. So it sounds so simple for us human, but you know, we have to teach everything, every little step to an AI agent so that our little robot is able to perform the task. And then, then this is happening something scoring, you know scoring. If it's something successful, it gets a plus one. If something is unsuccessful, it gets a minus one added. So we add no actions. So what we have now in our agent memory, we add those actions. So the insights G1 and G2, this one here, the insight E1 and E2, and the insight S1 to S4 on the sublevel. Those are now in our agent memory, and those are kind of, if you want, commands. If something happened, hey, maybe I should check here my checklist before you start an aeroplane. You know, you have a checklist for a particular task in a specific environment for a real specific subtask, depending if you have to prepare coffee or tea. Great. Now, next step is when a new task arrives, the agent selects the relevant insight in its own memory to aid here in the planning exercise. So if I say now, hey, please make me a cup of herbal tea leaves. So, you know, in our memory, we have how to do, how to prepare coffee, how to prepare normal tea, and now some herbal tea. So 
the inside selection now that the LLM is doing, it has to filter out of its list of all the possible inside what now apply for my particular task. And the LLM comes back and says, hey, I found that herbal tea to make and cup are keywords that are important. And I look up now in my own memory as an agent and I identify here relevant subtasks that are related to my task to make a cup of herbal tea. In this subtask, I found find here the utensils, prepare hot beverages, and selected insights that I now extract here from my list of all the possible insights is G1 to G2, E1 to E2, and the subtask, we only have four subtasks, but you understand immediately what it is doing. And then we augment now here with this particular information now our task prompt. You see, the agent is not going somewhere and looking for documents on the internet like in a normal RAG system. But the agent is trying to find here from a short list at the beginning of possible insights. It builds up here a huge list of insights for a specific task that the robot has already successfully done or unsuccessfully done. And then trying to come up here with insights that are relevant for the task. So it throws away, let's say, 90% of all the insight it already found, it experimented with. And it decides for my particular task, I, also, I only need five or six insight. And I focus here on those insight. And those insight prepare me my action plan, my logical sequence of actions, my strategy to perform the task given by the user. So planning with insight, the agent now formulates a plan. Now that it has, if you want, a checklist. Now it's once here to start the airplane. So starts go to the kitchen, says here E1, knows that the kitchen is the place to start. You say, great. So apply here the insight. And if not found in cabinet, check the dishwasher, maybe somewhere in the drying rack you would find all the things that you need. Maybe check near the stove or the countertops till you have all the gadgets that you need. Then find the tea leaves, the specific tea leaves. No? Ensure all ingredients are guarded before starting. You know, this is G1 and S4. Ensure that the kettle is functioning. Apply inside S3. Hot water is essential. And then it starts with the action. Boil the water. Add the leaves and you understand. So we have, if you want here, not the complete space of all available actions, but... With here the inside selection for a specific task, the agent now has selected here what the agent thinks based on what is in the agent memory, those relevant insights to perform the job. Great. Have you noted it? Have you noticed what is so different now? We do not touch the complexity or the learning or the in-context learning or what ever a reinforcement learning of the LLM or the agent as a whole or even multi-agent system. No, not at all. We just operate here within the agent's memory. This idea is brilliant. Next step, of course, is updating the inside based on the new experience. So after the task done, I have here my herbal tea in front of me. The agent says, hey, task experience successful yes and now this kind of reinforcement learning happens but on a completely different level because what it is doing now is so simple but it's so beautiful it says hey i agree that the actions here g1 g2 e1 uh, s1 to s4 uh, increment here the score everyone gets a plus one so you see, so we get from a level, everybody has a level one now to a level two. So those have proven to be valuable to have here a successful execution of the user commands. If the LLM would say, okay, I was missing something. I could not find the cattle, for example. Some new insight is necessary. Look around before you start to do anything that you have all the ingredients that you need to perform the job. 
If not, no new insights is added to the agent's memory list. Isn't that simple? Now, there's some unique feature that was really fascinating because you know what? This methodology is really robust in the domain shifting. I have here an example that I came up with and I ask here my little strawberry to kind of simulate this to you. So imagine we have now a different domain and now we change the environment. We go from the kitchen here to the living room and I say, hey, please tidy up the living room. Now, what does our AI agent, our robot know? Experience five, unsuccessful task execution, tidy up the living room, the agent plan is go to the living room, pick up the items on the floor and place all the items on the coffee table. Because this is what the knows from the kitchen, maybe you put everything on the coffee table and then the user is happy if it finds its coffee or its tea at the coffee table. Now this leads to failure, no? because I would expect the items to be put away, not placed on my coffee table. But okay, the idea is that the system can learn. But the complexity of learning, of continuous learning, is not ingrained now in the LLM, but in the agent's memory. So this is a new domain, beautiful. So what the little agent is, has learned clarify the user expectation if the task instructions are not really clear. So this is a general insight you see G3 that the system has from some older experience or maybe came up here as a solution. If the LLM does not understand or the agent does not understand exactly what to do, hey, ask the user. Great. And then we have here for the living room, we have a new insight in the living room. Items shouldn't be returned to their designated storage spaces like the shelves or the cabinets. So this might be the answer by the user and gets now a new insight here in the agent's memory. And for the subtask too, the subtask, let's just call it tidying up. So we have now S5 and S6 new insights here. And when tidying, organize the items by category and store them appropriately. So ensure that the surfaces like the coffee tables are clear unless the items belong there. So you see, books go with all the books and they go in the bookshelf and you get the idea. So the inside selection and the planning is now, now the system comes and looks here in its internal memory. What kind of checklist do I have to be successful to come up then with a plan? Goes here with G3, clarify the expectation, we know that should, everything should go to the storage spaces. And yes, beautiful. And then the agent starts a revised planning. Again, can come back and say, hey, would I like to put me the items back in their storage places where they belong? Yes, no. Go to the living room, pick up the items, sort the items, return the items to their storage areas, ensure all services are clear unless they belong there, let's say the coffee table, and successful. And then again, the agent learned that it's inside where helpful on the checklist, on the sequence of logical actions to take to be successful. And then it simply increased the scores also for the new insights G3, E3, S5 and S6, because those insights were helpful in the new environment. So it is so simple, this idea, but it was not applied until three days ago. So if you want, what is the overall method? Very short summary. I try to summarize this in a symmetric way. I say, we, at first we have the experience. The experience has two legs, if you want. The generation of the experience data and the selection of specific experiences that we need to fulfill our task. So if you want experience generation, those are the, the data of the past, that we provide here as training data to the agent. The experience selection is now, as I told you, the pure success case or the pairing with success and failure pairs, pairs that are real similar in the semantic task. To generate new insight, focus on tasks similar or challenging new task. And then after we have this with the experience, you understand we are looking now for the insights given our experience data. So the first step here is also experience generation, now the insight generation. The agent generates insight at a general environment and subtask level, 
creating a rich and structured knowledge base. And you say, hey, is there maybe an option to build here a knowledge graph? Well, not so fast. Of course, we can also improve on the research by Stanford and Zhenghua. Inside then this inside selection is the next step. We have the experience selection and now we have the inside selection. So you see it's always the same idea but on different object classes. So when a new task arrives, the agent selects relevant insights using now the hash map indexing to ensure that they are pertinent. Planning, the agent then incorporates those inside that it selected. It throws away 90% of all the insight on hash maps and it just shows a very specific set of insights for its execution. And it does now the planning leading to improved decision-making successful task execution. And the beauty is we have a continuous learning. And without touching the LLM, no fine tuning, no reinforcement learning, either by human feedback or DPO or anything at all, or multi-agent reinforcement learning, no nothing, no MRRL. We just do this here with hash map indexing. And this is the beauty. This is done outside of the LLM and it is so simple. So the learning experience itself manifests itself in a continuous updated list of specific insights. It's a hash map. And from a green grasshopper, a hash map, also known as a hash table in the simplest case, is simply a data structure that implements here an associative array a structure that can map keys to value. You know this from a dictionary, no? So hash map have keys and values, keys unique identifier used to store and retrieve data and the values, you get it, the data associated with each key. Now, we talked about complexity and those hash maps are simple because the beauty is they offer here a constant time complexity for insertion, deletion, and lookup operation of the hash maps, making them highly fast, efficient for indexing and retrieving the data in the memory of the agent. So the complexity of the LLM is not touched at all because all those new experience, all those new insight are now stored here in a simple hash map in the memory of our little agent. If you want to have an example, I did another example, for example here, supply chain strategy, some general insight or regional distribution for business here. We have here an environmental insight and specific subtext insights, employee training, you get the idea. Again, let me stress here, when you read the paper the first time, you maybe did not notice here what is hidden behind all this text. The idea is to outsource here this improved decision making and this improved reasoning and this improved planning capabilities of our AI agents from the LLM intelligence. We don't need the LLM intelligence now because we have our hash map. Now, if you want to read the original study, I highly recommend this. You see, those are here, the explanation. And I have to tell you, I read it twice and I did not understand it, given here this visualization. So I took a piece of paper and a pencil and then I started here to write. Okay, so what is the first step? And you have it again here, this two-step approach. No? Experience generation and experience selection. Inside generation and inside selection. Planning, new planning, update here the insight and continuous learning and adaptation. It is rather easy if you understand it the first time. This is here the official paper, September 25, 2024. We have here Tsinghua University, Beijing University of Posts and Telecommunications, Shanghai AI Laboratory and Stanford University. Real nice. Unfortunately, I was not able, I don't know why, to understand this immediately when I saw it. I had so many questions looking at this and therefore I decided if you want an easier access here to this specific publication, I hope that this video of mine gives you here an easier way to understand the complexity. I did a new example because I was playing around now and since I did here a simulation with strawberry and I kind of programmed strawberry to follow here this particular pattern, I did a business management scenario overview. 
So I did a simulation. I said, I have a company, a mid-sized manufacturing firm that is specializing here in consumer electronics, just as a demo. And the agent role is now to be a virtual assistant to the chief operating officer or choose the chief financial officer, whatever you like, you get the idea. And the agent role is supporting here the strategic planning, the operational efficiency and the decision making of humans. And the objective is, I want to demonstrate how here our MSI agent collects the experiences, generates multi-scale insights and utilizes them to improve here the business management process. It took me about two hours, but if you want, in my next video, I scroll with you through a demo. I show you how to do it. I show you the result if you're interested. And currently I have a third example about theoretical physics, how we can I test out in a simulation if we can use this kind of methodology here for the MSI agent to also have some advancement in theoretical physics, how far this system is able to go. But more about this maybe in my next video. I hope you have an idea, you have an introduction, you have a basic feeling what is going on in this new methodology. Please read also the original paper, highly recommend it. It is such a beautiful idea not to put more complexity in the LLM, not to build more complex LLMs, bigger LLMs, but to maybe go with smaller LLMs and use this beautiful tool use and function calling and have here a real use case for the agent memory and with just a hash map. This is such a beautiful idea. Play it around. Maybe you want to program this yourself for your application. For the moment, I'm now playing with this for multiple hours. It is really powerful. And you know, it is so transparent because you can ask them, the agent, hey, show me here all your insight that you used here in your internal preparation to come up with the planning of the strategy for the task. More about this maybe in my next video. And it would be great to see you then.